Hi everybody, Dylan here. Story 10, episode 34, beginning part 6. It took Rother several attempts to retrieve Roxy's body. The poor Porthas are grateful to him for getting her and very sad to lose their Roxy. Fish and Wildlife returned but couldn't find the, the croc, so they had to leave him go. Ciao. Took several attempts for Rafta to retrieve the dog's body from the mangrove thicket. The Porths are grateful to Rafta for his efforts. They had Roxy cremated Friday morning. We wanted to give her a proper burial, Janet Porath said. Fish and wildlife officers returned to the canal to remove the crocodile but couldn't find it. Horde said it's rare for an American crocodile to attack a pet. Crocodiles are considered more aggressive. Fish and Wildlife spokesman Bobby Dupe said, That is why the attack on Roxy is so troubling. Don't recall any croc taking a dog, Dupe said. Monroe County has the largest concentration of saltwater crocs in the United States. They are considered a threatened species by the federal government. Successful conservation efforts mean their populations around developed areas will continue to grow. These animals are going to be here, they were here before us, and it's their future, said Horde, the biologist. They're re-establishing themselves in their historical range. For this reason, you urges fishermen not to discard fish carcasses. In the water after returning to the dock, the crocs are always out for a free meal. Under these circumstances, there is not much we can do to protect our pets short of having them leashed when near croc-infested water. On the 12th of January we launched the boat and were ready for a trip to the Keys. Lonnie and I had lived in the Keys on our boat back in 1985. We lived there for about four years. We were looking forward to going back. We had a few things to do to the Margaret Ashton before we could leave, so we anchored in the St. Augustine Anchorage for about three weeks. Every morning Lonnie and I would dinghy all the dogs to an open field in the marina. You can see what I mean about walking the dogs being a little more challenging. First loading them all into the dinghy. Then the ride itself. Eight dogs in the dinghy. Some, walking on the pontoons as though they're high-wire professionals. This can be nerve-wracking. Then there's how to unload them without any of them escaping before I have them tethered or in their doggy cart. I was lucky there was an open field at the marina. I didn't have to be so careful. When close to any roads or cars, extra precautions are needed. I must take the four bigger dogs first. I can use two leashes with an attachment at the end of each lead. This way I can take four bigger dogs all at the same time, and still be able to control them and keep them safe. Next, I take the four smaller dogs in the doggy cart. PetSmart carries these. My smaller dogs refused to walk on leads, so after I have them carted to a safe place, I let them run off lead. This fiasco takes both Lonnie and me all morning. If we're taking all eight dogs. Hi everybody, Story 10 Episode 34 End Part 6. I tell everyone how often I manage to take eight dogs for a walk. It's a major episode, trying to keep everyone safe from drowning and from getting hit by a car. Ciao!